Please. As required by the Open Public Meetings Act of 1975, adequate notice this meeting was provided on January 12, 2023, by publication of notice in Express Times and Hunter County Democrat, and by posting of said notice in Mr. Building on the same day. Uh, Mayor Barson is excused. Mr. Baylor? Here. Mr. Beam? Here. Mr. Kennedy? Here. Ms. McDermott? Here. Mr. Lavery? Here. And Mr. Finnelli? Here. Let's all rise for the flag salute. Okay. Uh, the first thing that we're going to take care of tonight is we have awards recognition by the Environmental Commission for their Arbor Day essay contest winners. Um, Bob, you want to come up and start that, please? Yeah. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Um, we're doing a, we, every year we have a, an essay contest to raise awareness to some aspect of, of environmental issue that may impact our town. And typically we've been doing things about garbage and plastic, plastic bags and things like that. This year we, we broke from tradition. We picked a topic on forever chemicals it's it's a new topic it's a new it's a new um term that people are going to start hearing more and more about because the water that we drink is contaminated with it some, among other things so um we, the committee met we came up with a question and then mr glassman here carried it to the school and uh, introduced it, the question to the Class, and you got 28 essays, correct? And these, right, right around that. and uh, these are the winners, and they were quite good this year. I mean, they were these were probably the best essays we've seen. And on top of that, uh, it was very difficult to come up with three winners because it's effectively everyone was a winner because they. I was I was dumbfounded that the kids did so well recognizing what these chemicals were and understanding what they were and how to mitigate uh, issues about getting rid of them. So, Mr. Zetson. Okay, thank you, Bob. All right, so as Bob said, I'm just going to repeat just a couple things to continue to put it into context. Probably in the 1930s, which uh, one of you did point out in your essay, uh, is when, and, and I have to always look at it, polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAs. That's when somebody invented them and they began to be used. Um, what are they used in? I'm just going to read off a few things so everybody hears it. Building and construction materials, cleaning fluids, pacemakers, MRI imaging, solar panels, lithium batteries, engine parts, waterproofing, things like carpet and clothing, smudge resistant touch screens, which were a lot of us are using. And really the one that hits home for a lot of people, it's in food packaging. It's what keeps the food wrapped, but not letting the moisture get to the wrapping. It's on the uh, the rapid, not good. So it has uh, gone into our drinking water, meats, dairy products, and unfortunately, it's inside probably every one of us. They call it forever because it's not going away. No one has invented a way for it to go away. No one has come up with the legislation or the alternatives yet but our goal with this topic every year and we've been doing this for almost 20 years now we go to the seventh grade science class and we work with uh, the teacher in this case mrs hummer and we present a question and an essay contest so this time we ask what can we do to avoid the threats from forever chemicals known as PFAs. And we picked out three of the essays that definitely highlighted 
uh, some items, some things different from the other 25 or uh, 28 or so uh, other essays. So for instance, our third place winner, who I'm now going to embarrass in front of everybody, Ryan Ford, congratulations, Ryan. Uh, you did point out that one of the things that we should do as a society is come up with new laws and then hopefully find ways to enforce those laws. Uh, you, you pointed out that this bad chemical is increasing cholesterol levels, decreasing vaccine effectiveness, changing our livers, and it's a risk of high blood pressure and of course a risk of cancer. So congratulations to Ryan, our third place winner, for eating the nail on the head. Ryan is the first to be embarrassed, and Bob, if you could join me up here, please. Let's not trip on cords. Uh, we have a township attorney here. We don't want anybody falling. <laughs> no, you don't. So, Ryan, you're front and center, and Paul, you're here. Yep. Okay. Um, Where's your well, deputy you mayor? No, 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 right on. And big guy. you hold that. Great. And Ryan <laughs> is getting a $50 gift card to Target. So congratulations. All right, here we go. Have a seat. Now we're going to go to our second place winner, uh, who is Sophia Fletcher. And Sophia, time to embarrass you. You pointed out the uh, all the different products that this chemical is definitely in. Of course, we mentioned the packaging of food, pizza boxes, candy wrappers, one of my favorites. You mentioned uh, efforts to find ways to destroy the chemical. And that there, you pointed out that there's a team of researchers that are that did find a way to destroy, break down the chemical, the actual molecules. But those researchers and others haven't yet found a way to do that on a much larger scale, how to just mitigate the whole chemical altogether. Maybe you're going to be that person. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? We can only hope that somebody does. Uh, and then you mentioned that we should avoid reheating food in takeout containers. I know that's something that I started to do myself. So, uh, uh, Sophia, congratulations. And uh, let's move a little forward. I didn't, I, I forgot you were going to stand right in the middle. And we have a $75 gift card for part of All right, you are welcome. All right, now it's for number one. We have Samantha Werner. It's your turn. Samantha, you pointed out not only the uh, uh, some of the similar items of the problems with this chemical and what should be done, what the Environmental Commission Committee really appreciated was that you focused on enforcing new laws, coming up with alternative chemicals maybe, and really uh, something that a few of us really liked is consumer pressure, buying power, that if we all know it's a problem and the manufacturers aren't going to make a change without pressure, that's going to be one of the keys. We all know that in this society of ours, Things are going to get done if people are pressed to do it. So that's good. Hopefully, your future involves somehow getting uh, your your ideas out there and finding ways to help our environment even more. So congratulations, Samantha. Come on up. There you go. And first place winner gets one hundred and twenty-five dollars to Target. How about it? 
<laughs> All right. Good job. Thank you. All right. Uh, that concludes our award ceremony. Deputy Mayor, uh, uh, Township Committee, we really appreciate you giving us the time to honor these three students. And uh, I'll thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no. Um, I can't wait to sit down and actually read them now. You know, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. It sounds like there's some really pertinent information in a couple of them. <laughs> Probably something I don't want to hear, but <laughs> but anyway, nice job, folks. Nice job. All right. So moving on with town business. <laughs> Uh, approval of the meeting minute for the regular meeting of March 16th, 2023. All right. Can I get a motion? Very nice meeting you all. Second. Uh, nice meeting you, Dick. Roll call, Lisa. Mr. Baylor. I'm going to have to stand. I got there late. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kenyon? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Uh, I'd like a motion to accept the treasurer's report from the March bills list. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? I see the chief's not here yet. I just had one question. What elite vehicle solutions? Is that a PD? Elite vehicle solutions? Yes. Like the of the replacement vehicle. Does it look like? Uh, sure. I'll bet you that sounds familiar, like um, part of the upfitting for the replacement vehicle for the one that was totaled. Possibly yeah, makes sense. Okay, and not a regular vendor, so that's why I didn't recognize it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. Lisa Rocco. Mr. Baylor. Yes. Mr. Bean. Yes. Mr. Kenyon. Yes. Mr. Dermot. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to have a motion on the tax collectors. Tax and sewer reports for March of 2023. I'll make that motion. A second. Any questions or comments? No. Lisa? Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yeah. Okay. Department heads. Uh, Joe had to attend a, uh, a Chiefs Association meeting tonight, so he was unable to. Uh, we briefly discussed it was really nothing special that needed to be conveyed. Uh, they are changing to summer hours in the very near future. And that was pretty much about it on that end. Um, Lisa, did you want to, the chief's not here yet. Did you want to talk about your report? Because there was a couple of things that you've been mentioning right along. I, I think, uh, have we? I, uh, I have mentioned individually to some of you the uh, progress we've made in terms of looking for a uh, possible broker for the health insurance. That is in there. I don't know if anybody has any specific questions about that. I'm still waiting for the updated claims report. Uh, right. That will be sent to both of those vendors and we can see what they come back with it. I see in reference to Daniel's Law, um, <laughs> yourself and uh, Eloise and Jennifer. Correct. Have all been registered as redactors? Correct. And I, I did want to mention uh, regarding that, I did ask the website admin to disable the links to all past meeting minutes except for 2023. Uh, none of us have been able to get an answer from the OIP regarding the question about public comment and the fact that typically you've always required a, you know, a resident to give their name and their address during public comment. And it's just not possible now with Daniel's law. And it's also impossible to go back through 10 years worth of meeting minutes to make sure that, you know, someone who is now protected is not on that list. So uh, every clerk in the state is kind of going, going back at this point um, or putting a little caveat on the website that then people can contact you and you can redact the individual copy if they need to see it. Um, so Mike and I had already discussed that a couple months ago. So I did ask that that be done. I see that we, a 65 gallon container is filled 13 times and shredded. That is the container that they used. Yeah. That is good. That's a lot of space. Over That's there. a lot of space. A lot of documents we're not going to be uh, budget meeting. We can go over. 
um, township doctor. We ended up needing to sign on a new doctor. And we've been working on that since last year. Uh, but yeah, uh, the department heads were all able to meet with this Vivian Kaplan so that she could help us uh, work out additional details in terms of exactly what VBW needs. Uh, for like DOT physical specifically and what the chief needs for onboarding new police officers because there are different requirements for those positions. So we're it's a work in progress. But... Uh, pavilion rentals, anything on that? Um, I was expecting a summary from our meeting with open space, but I didn't get it yet from Frank Pinto. So it'll be on for next month. Um, anything we need to talk about on claim property? Still waiting, but I did have... Um, more correspondence with them, and they needed proof that I was authorized to uh, request our unclaimed property from the state on behalf of the township. So Bob uh, wrote a letter, and uh, we'll just wait and see where that goes. But it is a you know fifteen hundred dollars worth of unclaimed money out there, so hopefully we can sure get that. And the only other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I had had gone on a Facebook Marketplace site and located a conference table and some basically brand new office chairs and things like that and joe and the guys were able to go pick it up for us today and uh yeah i think we got about i don't know probably eight thousand dollars worth of office equipment uh for free and our dpw was awesome and went there and took it apart and pd's gonna have some new chairs so thank you for doing yeah i was hearing there's a little bit of a chair issue there chief huh <laughs> things looking a little ragged down there yeah. <laughs> these are really nice they're brand new they're awesome so. where'd you get them from Facebook Marketplace. For free? Oh, free. Okay. Wow. Who was the person giving away? Uh, Joe Mexi could tell it. It was, uh, an, uh, you know, a office space that was previously utilized by one of the shipping companies. Oh, okay. And when they left, they left this furniture right. behind. Right. Yeah. But so. it's a 15-foot um, mm. conference table. It's beautiful. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice find. Nice right. job, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right, now the all important one that we've been talking about here, banking inquiries. Mm -hmm. So I did you. provide you guys with a uh, the summary at your desk and we were discussing a little bit earlier. Um, I don't think we need to do a motion on the record tonight. The only reason I thought we'd have to do a motion is if we had to add a new bank to our list of depositories. Uh, the TD Bank has come back with the most competitive rates, it appears. We are still working out the details they've offered us, as you can see in those rates. A uh, six-month CD for 5.06%. Um, a liquid checking account, which still needs some clarification on exactly what that means, uh, for 4.5%. And then we had asked them to go back because, <clears throat> as you guys know, we have several different trust accounts and a lot of different individual accounts. And it's not like we can lump all that money into one account to get really good interest. So we asked them to look across the board if we left all our money with them, it's currently with them, and they clearly don't want to lose us, which is a good thing. Um, and they came back with um, thinking that they could get us somewhere between three and a half and three point seven five across the board. So it's all good news. Yeah. Um, I don't think a vote on the record is even necessary. You know, Shannon and I will just make the necessary adjustments, and then you know, of course, if something better comes down the pike, as long as it's not locked into a CD, if it was in that liquid account. Uh, we could make another change, but we contacted eight banks and five got back to us. So. Right. I mean, that's good. And with that being said, Bill had made uh, a, a, an interesting comment or two. Can we take our, our COA funds and our open space funds that are just sitting in? So that that would be what this proposed uh, full banking relationship adjustment, that's what okay. that would fall under. Because we can't, you can't commingle them. You no, can't, I know you, you can't commingle them. So but... we asked them to kind of look at the whole picture. Right. And if, if you have all of our money, what can you do for the accounts that are not in a CD per se? Right. So, and that number is much better than okay. what we currently have. So the six month CD <clears throat> at 5.06%. And how much do we have in the bond money that we can put in there? I believe it is around $7 million. So that would be on an annual basis about 350000 So even if it just sat for three months, we would get about 175000 bucks. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that 5.06 would be the annual APR. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. cut it in half. Right. Right. Exactly. So yep. That's uh, a lot of money. Yep. So you guys can go ahead. They don't need any type of. Uh... Okay. No. 
Thank you for that. Yeah, no, that's some good news. That is good. A win-win. I think what I like to see is if we, we have these accounts in there, and if it fluctuates, we should at least know each month how it fluctuates. So if Shannon can provide, you know, something that in this account is we went up, putting it down, you know, you know, under the current administration, I don't see it in Washington going down much. I only see it in our future going up. It which benefits the town, but anybody wants a mortgage or anything else, not yeah, so much, right? right. right. No. Yeah, right. Um, so Lisa, a pavilion rentals. What kind of requests are you getting? You get any strange requests for anything? Yeah, we get yeah, we get very strange requests sometimes. Uh, what, <laughs> and at what point should they come to the township committee? Or is well, there just a list? It's not that they wouldn't. So what I'm trying to do is uh, develop a more concise list of no's so that it's just in writing. And if somebody has a thought and they read our application and they see the second page is like some of the things that are prohibited, that it prevents a lot of those calls from even getting to us. Okay. Because the way that it is now, if it's not itemized out, technically there's a mechanism for them to go to open space and ask open space if it's okay. And then it would come to us and ask if it's okay. And it's just this, it, it occupies a lot of different people's time unnecessarily. You know, we are, we're never going to allow a bounce house to be at a kid's birthday party because of insurance reasons. Right. So it should just be on the list of no's. Um, um, and my other main concern was that we, you know, sometimes you can rent a, a pavilion for $150 and then you find out there was a 200 person wedding there. And that obviously has a much greater impact than somebody running for 50 people. So I think there has to be a limit of people, and if the event is over that, then it's considered a special event, and right, we get right. a little additional money and require that they pack out whatever they pack in so that it's not cumbersome for Joe and the guys. So The, Hag the Haggerty property with the contamination, any word on that? Uh, the ball is completely in our court on that. We have to decide uh, how much when we're going to move forward. You know, the, the DEP has given us those draft ordinances for us to start enacting. The but problem is that we've got to find the money. And how much is it? Well, we, we did a very rough estimate of, you know, that whole project and using their linear feet and a, and a number that Aqua gave us for, for a linear foot, and it was like an $800,000 project. Hmm. Now, Mike has expressed that he thinks it can get done for less than that, but, you know, there is no DEP grant money to get us, you know, going with that. We would have to fund it and then seek reimbursement. But they were on a reimburse it though. Correct. Right. Yeah, it, the, mm -hmm. you get reimbursed. Right. The uh, I think I mentioned this before in Franklin. Uh, there's much bigger project. <clears throat> uh, what they did is they ended up moving forward, and in order to move forward and be able to pay the bills before the contract with the DP gets executed and the reimbursables can get started, is they when they bonded the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um. And hoping that the job will be done before, uh, you know, before the bond comes due, of course, well before that. So, so that was the way they got around the needing the front end money. So, I mean, that, there's obviously costs associated with doing that. But that would all be reimbursed. Well, I don't think, know about the cost. Well, I don't know. There's I think the cost of the bonding would not be. Would yeah. It's one of the questions that needs to be clarified right. by them because that could be twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, no, probably every bit of that, right? Yeah. On eight hundred thousand, sure, if not more. Right. Right. Bonding, please. Uh, you have to check. So, thinking of bonding, what's the latest with the fire or the municipal complex? Um, the latest is that the. County Planning Board still would not approve or let us move forward with um, the entrance as wide as um, our you know designers felt were necessary. So the note from Joe, um, basically he said that the uh, county is dead set on a 50-foot entrance uh, and they're using a Belvedere Fire Station as their example of why it should be adequate. And I guess you know, Joe has conceded that rather than have this continue to be dragged out and yeah, he's authorized the them to design the fifty foot entrance. Yeah, and Joe feels somewhere down the road if we need to. Well, what we make still, an interior adjustment? Did he wanted 
wider? Or Correct. Do you, but you don't want it wider. Because they do not want them backing in to the facility. They were and, concerned about that. And right? Joe felt, even though they do it here in a much more congested, but um, Joe felt that if they were going to be pulling in with the other traffic coming, that it needed to be wider. And that's how the engineer designed it. But the planning board hasn't budged on it. And we're it's just going to delay the project, months. right? Okay, so. so what else is holding this up? Could they even do more borings or whatever? No, is? no, that's done. You, that's and, done. And if you saw on the bills list, that was in there. Mm -hmm. um, that's all done. Um, basically, it's just well, getting this final doing? approval yeah. with the new, the, the smaller mm -hmm. design on the entrance and bam. Um, but you're still one more month tied up down at county. Is that is that the only thing? It's out there well, with the we, county. <laughs> they wanted those emergency lights, and we conceded to that. They wanted the traffic study. We protested that. Obviously, we're just moving it down the street a little ways, and only half of the traffic. Not having the study. I don't see that specifically mentioned here, but it looks like uh, Tom Pugsley was saying that the holdup was the driveway. So maybe they did agree to elimination of that. I know Bob was hoping to follow up with Lori at the county, and I don't know if he back from her so I haven't heard anything from her office but so when we're talking about projects is the co-op on here or is it not maybe well we're still in in in, in uh, uh on the list of it, well just reports yet okay so we can bring that up a little bit further down the line okay. here um billing issue nothing new on that no. mm -hmm. Uh, the insurance registry, nothing more on that at this stage of the game. No. Same thing with the lead based paint in rental and dwellings. We're kind of in limbo on that. That's again for us to take action, but you know, there are a lot of unanswered a lot questions of, right. implementation. So we have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Did we accomplish the Board of Education Shared Service Agreement? Uh, I don't still, know why it's not signed, but also, it's still not signed. I'm to, <laughs> and the line of sight. Oh, and the line of sight, we still haven't heard back from that. So, no. okay. All right, Chief, let's, uh, Chief Herman, let's bounce back to your report. Do they have any questions regarding the report? Uh, <clears throat> Mayor Barsony asked for the number of trucks stopped and the number summoned. We put on the monthly report, so that is on there. Under summons is uh, 50, 84 trucks stopped, 56 summons. Uh, That's a good percentage. 284 traffic tickets for the month, 457 warnings. Uh, very high in arrests, 18 ar adult arrests, three juvenile arrests, one drunk driving arrests. Uh, we, are, we are busy. <laughs> as you'll see in the news with the uh, surrounding towns, uh, so is everybody else. Uh, <clears throat> as, is, was there any questions regarding the monthly report? So the adult arrest, what's the commonality of 18 of them? I mean, is it? A lot of sh uh, shoplifting, um, and I don't know if you saw the press release from the prosecutor's office. Uh, we had a uh, human trafficking, uh, child sexual assault uh, case that additional charges went out for that uh, Detective Blazier has been working quite extensively on for months. So there's some more so, arrests there. Where uh, I don't know how much of a detail you can give us, but that kind of what part of town was that incident? Was it something uh, like uh, that to... are uh, up or in or our... okay, yep. Right. What a guess, then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm we, trying not I'm to do that, right? No, 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 all right. So, <laughs> so, Chief, how about an update date on the SRO? Because I know Vicky is jumping at the bit. I did get a little preview. You want to go to uh, yeah, we can go into that. It just saves it versus later. Uh, well, the SRO uh, had a meeting with. That's all right. The superintendent, a grant writer, and the uh, the SRO that uh, will be starting on Wednesday. With uh, but there's several agency things that had to be completed for they're officially in the school, so uh, we will be taking care of that next week and hoping that uh, the start will be next week, uh, late in the week or the uh, the following week. 
Unfortunately, as I've said in the past, that only is funded through my grant right now until the end of September. Uh, in speaking with the grant writer that helped me with this grant, uh, she advised me there is another grant out there separate than the COPS hiring grant that I apply for every year uh, to try to get uh, SRO funded for the uh, next year. We'll see what happens. And uh, there's a uh, Finally, things moving with it, and uh, a lot of uh, money out there that I have to file through financial reports with the grant to get. Uh, the uh, individual that is going to be hired, her name is uh, Kate Bushaberger. She's a uh, former officer from Branchburg and uh, retired uh, retired officer. So. We have uh, someone uh, finally fill a spot and uh, with some experience. So, Chief, are they getting cars up there too to be stationed while they're in the building per se? And are they going to replace your officers that currently monitor the loading and unloading? Uh, that is the idea. My officers still will be going up there occasionally. Um, I always like to have a lot of uh, presence up there. The vehicle issue, uh, we are extremely short on vehicles. So, um, my two of our vehicles, I had put out a service because they needed work for them, and it just I didn't want to put money into them anymore. They're just uh, it's just putting money into something that's uh, that's kind of a waste. However, I need a car up there, so I am going to uh, fix up one of our older SUVs that has been uh, uh, off the road. We don't even use it for uh, road details because we just don't have road cars to put up there we don't we don't have enough um once the uh budget goes through but depending on that uh we'll be in a lot better position if uh if everything you know goes uh, accordingly as, it, as it's going so far um uh, but uh but there'll, there'll be something up there <clears throat> i think that that's a lot of the uh the point of the sro is to have that car out there Chief, speaking of cars, I was talking to the lieutenant today when I was over at ShopRite, and that pickup truck with only, I don't know, 50,000 miles on it sounded awful. I don't know if you got a. It, 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 it's always sounded loud like that. Yeah. But the 50,000 miles, you can probably multiply that in engine hours by yeah, two or three. Yeah, three yeah. So, uh, but uh, that recently went up last year and had. Um, Kind of like a uh, complete checkup on it, so it's it's okay. Okay, just sound, just might sound a little loud. <laughs> and then, of course, Chief, I'm going to ask the last question here. But when it comes to the truck stop and truck summonses, um, why not 86 for 86? <laughs> I, 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 it, oh, 86 it, stop, 86 summonses, right? Uh, well, it'd be illegal for me to force the upstairs. <laughs> well, well I understand that, but. But what are some of the uh that could be a lot of trucks um for instance today i i was out there uh for a little while i had a, a local delivery someone filling the swimming pool with a tractor trailer with some uh water uh taking some water over no there. sure I I had, mean, that's uh, a pass sure i had some uh farming trucks I had another one uh yesterday that uh was making a actually a local delivery on uh Right in, right in town here, which is, uh, I don't see too often, but um, and that could be a lot of it, uh, but. All right, I was just kind of curious. There yeah. is a, there there is still um, a problem with that postal facility with trucks still going through. Um, I, I don't know what else to do other than making it my, uh, every month to ask them to remind truck drivers when you know basically getting there that not to go through as far as telling them before they get there that's a little bit difficult because they have to go out through all the trucking outfits and right some of them uh some of them are private uh so well the other day i just noticed uh which low Con doesn't monitor it, on liberty road uh two back to back right up 519 liberty right on the north main head to 78 now you know so they're coming from you know, someplace north in the county. You know, that one certainly wasn't 
Were they posted. dropping off somewhere on Liberty or just driving? No, they drive through. I followed them from 519 straight up Liberty, right on the North Main. I don't know where they came from previous to that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Liberty Road's way restricted too. Yeah. You know, so, um, and then I bailed at Beatty's Road, but I'm sure they were heading to 78. Uh, you know, so I mean, it's just not the postal warehouse. Oh, no, you know, no, but it's, it's right. It's definitely no, there's I'm still surprised a bunch. how much more, how much I'm still getting. Yeah, because you would think if, by now the word would be out amongst them. Yeah. And, and, and in my opinion, as far as my experience, the ones that I summons, they like care less and less each time. It seems like because I don't, a lot of times they're, they're, they're outfit pays the tickets, pays the ticket. but you know, you figure they wouldn't want the points on their CDL. Uh, I don't know. A lot of them are. I was can you do the mandatory court what? hearing? Yeah, I was uh, going to say. I thought you switched to mandatory yeah, thought, court hearing. Uh, it's. I don't think it's really affecting them because they'll. Uh, I don't care. I, I don't. I as far as what uh, what's going on in court, um, I don't have the officers go to court unless they're really needed. Right. Uh, and a lot of this stuff goes to the court, and you know whether they. There's still a lot on Zoom they, too, right? There's not even personal appearances, right? Yet. Uh, if it's going to be a trial, yes. Okay. They'll, they'll, uh, have you come in and, uh. But a traffic citation with a trucker is not a trial, right? Uh, it could be if they want to fight it. If they want to fight it. Okay. They want to fight it. But they might just come in and pay it and. And be done with whatever. it. Yeah. The company's paying it. Chief, what was the big jump in comp hours there? We went from 83 in February to over 200. Uh, officers are just taking, uh. Instead of taking the money in overtime, they're getting it taken in comp. So in their uh, contract, it reads they can uh, they can if they work overtime, they can take it in comp in lieu of uh, overtime pay if I approve it. And then, kind of in a sense, you know, we're, we're it saves us money as far as the township uh, in most cases. All right, thanks, Chief. Uh, next, there's a nice report here from the zoning code enforcement. What was approved on the back and what's currently being worked on in respect to violations and such on the back, um, which I guess I was going to bring it up later, but we can bring this up right now. The West Avenue properties, they've been sent letters, properly noticed, properly this, properly that, and are, are, are at this stage of the game appear to be completely ignoring us. Even though last year he had made an agreement to paint uh, the graffiti in the buildings and secure them, but the weather turned bad, said he'd be back in the spring. Well, we're well. I think that was 2021. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is, at, at this stage of the game, I, I, we don't have to send the DPW up there right this particular second because they're not really qualified, I think, for shutting doors. I mean, maybe, that, but we're probably going to have to hire a contractor to... Joe actually just sent me an email. Um you know, he went up and conducted another site visit and took, you know, evaluated what was there and, you know, advised he'd need a five gallon pail of paint and they would need two sheets of plywood. Oh, and okay. He that's kind of simple. gave me a list, okay. um, you know, that they would, you know, obviously, you know, clear the, the weeds and whatnot and then paint and secure the building and have to get rid of those large items of furniture or hopefully cram it back into the building and then put the plywood up. To leave it on site so we don't have to pay I for this proposal. <laughs> uh, so he didn't really give me an estimated number of hours, but he said he, it, he would need about a week to schedule it. So okay. I am all in favor of uh, moving forward with that. We can, of course, you know, move Mike Lavery in, but uh, you know, they he he's been receiving the same notices through three different zoning officers. That's how long right. this has been. So, uh, Mike, any problem with us going up there and do that and, and turning it into a lien? No, because as long as we follow the and you know what's required by the ordinance so we have an ordinance that provides for okay. it so not an issue well then at least to make it so we'll take care of it all right and, what uh, about the uh, farmers and the big piles just sitting on oh well uh, actually we'll talk about that as we get into that here okay. you not doing any of this report part thanks so okay. um there's no court report because apparently there's some illnesses uh down in the uh the court, you know, so not everybody's there, so they're running a little behind on paperwork. But again, I don't suspect to see anything 
uh, special in the court reports or anything. Did anybody want to talk about anything on the back of the zoning thing, the violations, West Avenue we talked about? No, okay. Uh, ACO report. There was uh, two dogs that um, I guess were picked up from a deceased resident's home. Did we get, I know she attached a letter, but I didn't see the cost. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the bill was yeah. I yeah. remember the bill from my, the previous month. But... Four hundred and forty-two dollars per uh, dog. Okay, and they said it was the, the letter. The letter said it was for deworming. It's and yeah. It's so they were still alive. alive the dogs. The yeah, dogs were alive. The, the owner, but at the same rate, there was family that took responsibility for them. I had two questions about this because it was late at night and our ACO reported that um, our normal place was not open, but they charged us an emergency drop-off fee like for each dog. I was like, well, you only showed up once, it's $165 an animal. And then they did a litany of things. Um, and there's a note somewhere that basically says that, uh, and I don't see it here, alludes to the fact that the family has been contacted and they will pick the dogs up. So I don't know why, if these dogs weren't being properly cared for and they're being taken in by um, the person's family, why they wouldn't be paying this bill. Right. So we're in the process of trying to fight this, but I can pass this around. This was their response to our inquiry. Basically, it would be um, unprofessional of them not to provide all the care that they've outlined. Well, that's kind of what you read. They, they were yeah. kind of required. So no, our ACO maintains that the state does not require all those things to be done when it's, you know, a situation where you're coming in to take emergency care for a pet like that. Um, and the facility is basically saying that's their policy. They don't really care what the state minimums are. So, so then we should. Okay. So can we build a family? Well, that's what I, the yeah. next question was to Mike, and he's it's nodding. Being yes, passed on to the attorney. He, he, yeah, he's yeah, nodding. Yeah. Unfortunately, they suffered a loss, but right. the estate, just like any other bill, whether it be medical right. or otherwise, it could be passed on. Hopefully, there's money there to pay it. Right. Well, and, and I guess my comment then is if there's no money, if they're unwilling to uh, assess that as a tax lien, also. Oh, because she owned the home? I believe so. I'll have to check and see where there's a will, there's a way. Let me check and find out. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, there's a little ranch type cottage just to the left of the antiques oh, facility okay. right there. As soon as you drive in, it's straightforward. Um, okay. All right. That covers that. So, can I get a motion to accept all the uh, reports? Right. Consent I'll agenda. make a motion. I'll second it. Consent agenda. Questions, comments? Lisa? Uh, Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kenner? Yes. Ms. McDermott? Yes. Okay, committee reports. Lillian, you want to start? I don't have anything this month. Okay. Bill? No, nothing for me. All right. I'm going to briefly talk about the rescue squad for a minute. Um, last year, we had discussed getting the title to 9855 in 2002, but we were unsure of how much we were allowed to receive on a, an annual basis per se, which it would have been under um, because we did get, receive the title of 9852. Uh, so uh, they would like to pursue getting the title to 9855. Uh, they did send me some documentation with the approximate value of as similar as they could find in the marketplace, which was at about $7,000. So the only question that comes up, which is what came up this year, is the uh, the additional cost to insure once it's off our fleet policy. Well, uh, the squad could then... That's uh, why we were actually doing that expenditure, right, right. so I don't... But the town picks up the most of the insurance regardless. That's why the uh, expenditure on that line was a little over last year. We right. realized it was probably because of you guys taking that ambulance over. So I think Gary was going to look into it. And into it. But anyway, so with that being said, they're looking to get the title for 9855. And that is actually, along with the fire department, going to be able to uh, hopefully bill on uh, motor vehicle accidents and, and just basically call outs and stuff, just like the fire department. Um, it is loaded with uh, rescue tools, 
even in more advanced tools than the fire department has on in case the situation is ever needed. Um, but there'll be that will be a billable service when the time comes, when they get it all straightened out. Uh, that was it on zoning. We already talked to that. Uh, Brian. Uh, okay, so recreation had a successful icon. Um, you know, it's cold, but uh, right now it was really cold. <laughs> They, uh, they're requesting, they're going to have a fundraiser that they're going to work with um, the Booster Club on June 26th to the 29th. Rain date would be the 30th. It would take place at the basketball courts from 9.30 to 1 p.m. So they're requesting that they have the whole courts. And if they could have two porta johns, they're going to run a basketball clinic um, with Daryl Keckler. He's the head coach at Moravian, and he's going to bring in some college coaches during uh, the four days to speak to the kids. And I think they're talking about having at least 60 kids there. That would be How are they advertising for them? It's gonna go out through rec and then we're gonna, I guess our kids will get the first dibs and then it's gonna go out. To What's the the it's gonna be, oh, sorry, I didn't say that. It's gonna be going into third grade all the way to going into nine. Write that down <laughs> in case I forget next week. I could type that up for you. I'll give you the flyer when we make okay. it. Okay. I got to approve it first. Yeah. So that, that's what they're requesting. I think it's a good idea. It's going to get the kids something to do right at, outside of school and, uh, you know, get used and out of the courts. Will be painted courts. By yeah. The courts will be painted. And, uh, you know, it's a good fundraiser, I think. It's going to be $100 a kid, too. How about if there's two in a family? Any break? I don't see why not. I can talk to him. You know, like uh, 200 bucks might be, uh, yeah, uh, for some families, a little steep. So, so ask for a break. If it's over two bit. Uh, the second. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, it's a fun, a lot of it's a fundraiser, but Booster's yeah. going to be helping out as well. Okay. All right. So, what do we need to do? We need to approve the Red Zulu 2. Because do we have one on site now? Not for the basketball courts we saw. Yeah, but we do have at least one here behind the facility, right? Because that's where, I'm sure that's where the other one could be put next to. Uh, well, we should. Oh, the Porter John? No, Porter we, don't have any, we don't have. We any, don't have any no, at this facility anymore. Not that okay. I know. Of. Yeah. I think just at the park. So we would just, just have at the park. So we would have to bring into. Uh, uh, we can move them from. For the week, we can move them from Stacker. Uh, I'll bet you the cost of moving them. Yeah, just, just versus right, getting right. two more get two okay. is going to be very similar. Okay. Um. So I would just say get two more. Okay. Uh. So Lisa, are are we going to need to make a motion on this? Yeah, because yeah. you're you're reserving the court, yeah. right? For yeah, reserving the court. And, yeah. With two, uh, Porta Johns. Porta Johns, and that it'll be picked up out of uh rec anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Brian, go ahead. We're looking for the motion. So I make a motion um, that we give the recreation um, committee the use of the, bas the township basketball courts from June 26th to the 30th, the 30th being the rain date, um, from 9.30 to 1 o'clock. And we would also um, have two Porter Johns available for the kids. But I'll second that motion. Any questions or comments? No, at least. Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Ms. McDermott? Yes. Yeah. Okay, professional reports. Uh, Michael Fennell? Okay, thank you. Just have uh, two quick, it should be quick things. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the MS4 stormwater grant that uh, obviously we're required to update the uh, a number of things for the state uh, reg that just uh, came out or earlier this year or into the end of last year, I guess. Uh, we as if we weren't up, we weren't upgrading from a tier B to a tier A. Those grants are actually seventy five thousand dollars, so they are expecting a lot of work to be done if we're if we're going tier B to tier A. We're not. We're tier A, and we're staying tier A. Uh, so that 
that grant will be twenty five thousand. We made the application. It's it's not. Uh, I mean, we're going to get it. It's just a, I haven't heard it on from anybody yet. So we'll keep you posted on that. And uh, there's uh, not there. They, it gets paid out in in uh, chunks, if you will. Once it's approved, you get ten thousand, and when it's finished, you get fifteen. That's the way it works. So it certainly will help <laughs> help with the pain of uh, having to take care of this these new grant requirements or stormwater management requirements. We're going to be able to use the grant towards uh, renting the machine that's stocking all this stuff out. Oh no, 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 no! no. Sorry, no. All right, what are we going to be able to use it for? To pay us. For all the updated plans and reports oh, and so uh, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not for, for that. Yeah, okay. If I never said that before, I'm sorry. No, you might have. It just might have been 30 okay. days ago. And... <laughs> okay. That's a long time for me to right. remember things now. All right. <laughs> so and we'll keep you posted. I mean, all again, right. I don't think there's any, there's nothing due or deliverable this year, to my knowledge. But next year, we'll once once we get the grant, we'll we'll give you a better feel and uh, schedule and so forth. Okay. Uh, next item is Beatty's Road uh, one and two. Anything last month it was you guys are looking at it. Uh, um, any, any decision one way? Well, or the, the, the budget hasn't been passed yet, but I believe we had put money in for it. Oh. Okay, should we, we just... it in there, Mike? Well, <laughs> no, it's a half a tax point. There's no wedging. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so just sit tight for the time. Yeah, yeah for the okay. time being. Okay, I'll bring it up next month. Yeah, actually, yeah. If our, I our budget meeting is the 27th. Yeah. Actually, actually we'll if I recall, we were at 4 6 and had to go to 5 6 for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are we at? Uh, All right. No, no, if I. Well, it is. Uh, what is the, the There is like fifty four thousand, which is a tax point. One two three one thirty one one two. I'm trying to think what the, uh, the total grant amount is. One one twelve one thirty. So it's two hundred and well, right around two fifty. So right. I mean, it's a good chunk of change by right. getting. So no, uh, we we recognized okay. it. We accommodated it. Yeah, Beatty's is obviously a, right. a road to the. Uh, decent volume so, sure. okay that's all i have for my report i will um be requesting a very short executive session after the meeting yes yep. to discuss it's on here yeah okay thank you okay. uh attorney later i just have two things deputy mayor for executive which is comcast and aqua okay all business and actually, before I get to what I really wanted to talk about, like the dioxin thing, Jarvie, should we be trying to move forward and maybe taking my suggestion and looking at a bond? It was discussed last year, and because of the at the point in the process that where we were at for the municipal complex, um, I think it was advised that we couldn't do it last year. So you know, it's just been. So reach out to John Mooney and see yeah. if we can do it this year. Yeah, he does have the facts and, you know. Well, he'll be at your next meeting, meeting, right? Next week? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just save that conversation. I, yeah. I think John said that we're down at 4.6. If we get 3%, now we're talking close to 5%. So I'm thinking that maybe it could be a little bit more. But I also want to put in that. I think that he projected pretty accurately for yeah. a half year CD, but... Um, you know, again, it wasn't using the full yeah, allotment right. funds, so right. there's okay. some room there. But I also spoke to the chief that I like to see the SRO being picked up by the municipality for the last 13 weeks of the year because the grant's only good up to September, end of September. So we need 13 weeks of coverage, and then we can worry about 2024 next year. And we figured about 18 grand we would need, chief, somewhere around that neighborhood. 17, 18, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to discuss that next week. We'll hold off on that. Nope, we'll hold on that one. Until next week. Okay. All right. Uh, old business and uh, last meeting, uh, the mayor had suggested we get a subcommittee to work on the area in need of uh, redevelopment, uh, and he expressed a lot of interest in being on that subcommittee. 
Lillian uh, expressed some interest, and I certainly expressed some interest. I don't recall Brian now, Bill. Well, I'd be interested, but, but you know, but, okay, I got enough going on. No, no, yeah. no, I hear you. No, there's a lot of everybody's play. It's one right. of them free jobs again. But, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, so with that being said, uh, Lillian said that uh, uh, she would defer to me because she knows okay. that I'd like to be on it. But uh, Lillian will be an alternate in case Bob or myself can't make a specific meeting. We've already reached out to Kendra uh, to set up some potential dates to discuss it. Um, and you'll see in your packet, there's already a second business that's looking to discuss things with us. So it, it, it's certainly going to be of value. So what do I need to do? Make a motion to create a subcommittee? With the mayor and myself and Lillian as an alternate. What are we going to call this subcommittee? Redevelopment subcommittee? Yeah, Down. sure. Good to me. Keep it simple. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to develop a subcommittee, the redevelopment subcommittee, consisting of the mayor, myself, and Lillian. As an alternate. As an alternate. I'll second. Questions, comments? Okay, Lisa. Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Pennant? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Okay. Uh, new business. Under old business, uh, can we... Uh, sure. Oh, unless it's on the back nope. here. Like, what are we looking at? What's the status, Brian, with the basketball court? Any update on when they're going to paint it? No, I have to well, ask Jeremy. Nice. Uh, I guess they, they give him the plans of what the color, you know, the color scheme is going to be. Um, I was hearing end of May. End of May? Yeah. Well, okay. Let me... Uh, well, I need to ask now since and June. are we going forward with, with lighting this folks? I would like to. Okay. I think we need did we discuss discussion. that with the uh, open space? We did. Okay. So, uh, did, but it's, it's mixed, yeah, it's mixed results. So we gotta okay, think about so it. next oh two weeks. I think we're gonna have to have estimates and figure out okay. the talk. Uh, oh, under old business, can we bring up uh, affordable housing since that's old business? Uh, yeah, sure. What's the status on, uh, and Mike, what's the shovel going on the ground? Yeah. I wish I could answer that question, Bill. Um, well, I, I don't know. I think that there's no reason right now from an approval standpoint, permits, et cetera, that they couldn't. Which yeah, start which offer are you talking about? Two months. Uh, the Ingram. Ingram. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to need extensions. Months. I just talked to Jeff Long. Oh, really? What happened? Because I was going to say, John Drill kind of thought the ground would break in late June. Money. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, they have requested the county um, help them with their money situation. Right. Uh, which actually, Bill, I you spoke, to the, spoke to the county director and she said, if I do it for Greenwich, I have to do it for the county. Can't, what, the county. can't. They can't. Have, yeah. So what, yes, they, they have the COVID the relief account? funds and three hundred twenty I mean, twenty one million dollars that they wanted some help with. How much? They said the county has twenty one million dollars. I don't know if it's factual or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think oh. the state told them to go and uh, state. Yeah. Well, I thought the state was going to state. cover the cost of. Well, the state said it's a great idea. That's coming from Jeff, and that. Um, we can house all of the workers from the warehousing that is coming in Warren County. So that's that's what we're going to be known as. But it's my understanding that Warren County is going to be on the bottom of the list to be accepted for the at housing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be coming out of Hudson, Essex, Mercer. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So who do they think is going to be with them the money? Um, the last conversation I had with him, he said they're going to have to find a way. Let them find a way. Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. I did not know any of that. That's and, 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 and me personally, the conversation took place a little bit that I was like, well, oh, tough. But apparently the answer isn't tough. Um, we're online to make sure this project gets done regardless. Yeah, you but, know? you know, if, if Ingerman happens to back out because they can't afford it, that doesn't mean the taxpayers have to foot the bill to build yeah. it. We're just going to go back out to bed again. Well, that you may be very well to do, but if you don't get it, we're still okay. online with the courts for a $20 million project. Well, I think we could hold that up. I, I think, uh, uh, well, again, I mean, this is all our, just part of food for thought. Right. We're doing our due diligence. We are. Yeah, and that, okay, right, right. But we can't. Well, the state can do anything. The, state can, the courts can do anything. Yeah. They've mandated and 
So it could be problematic. So, uh, uh, but I was certainly under the recent impression that they were going to give them. Uh, they gave them more money, so. And they did give them more money. Yeah, and it still wasn't me. enough. Nope. Well, with the rates that are out there now, I mean, affordable housing gave them more money. The state gave them the more state. Money. Okay, the state really likes this this deal, you know, and they, because we're going to house all the warehouse workers. That's what he said. That's, that's true. So um, can, yeah. Yeah. Do they have kids? Let's see. Oh, right I, I, like I can't speak for all the warehouse workers or anything else like that, but in my current career position as temporary as it is uh i'm i'm doing a lot of uber and, and i'm taking people in and out of the warehouse regularly they all seem to be well housed elsewhere <laughs> from all echo anomical so areas this so. comes from jeff he said the state has been asking about township slash county contributions he told them that we already committed and that they need to seek um county for for dollars for the projects why doesn't the state use some of the billions of dollars of TARP money? They were the ones that said recently that we needed over said we will need the extensions. Right? I said we'll yeah. keep giving the extensions. So he's told them to get approval extensions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I, I, Brian he said yeah, we're getting can... killed on interest rates and cost increase. Right. We we knew it would happen. Um, um, but cost increase of, of, to the people that I talk to in the industry have somewhat flattened and millions additional and maybe come the down. State. They're getting millions additional mm -hmm. from the state. <clears throat> so for the twenty one million dollar project, maybe they're getting they have millions. To just, yeah, maybe they have, have to wait until you know interest rate go yeah. down in like yeah, maybe. four years, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. No, so who grants the extension? Is it the uh, uh, it's, uh, it's us. Yeah, well, uh, well, they'll have to as well. Yeah. I'm sure it's them that's going to have to. I think John will have to draft it. Yeah. And then we'll have to deal with it. So, Mike, let's just say they were going to go with it in June. Mm -hmm. When do you think occupancy? Hypothetically, it's this June they're going in. Is I need to let the school board know when that first student's going to arrive. You're in a well, it's clearly year. not till 2024, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it it really depends on how they if they focus on on the uh, you know the site improvements that they need to build and w one just one building and really focus on that building as opposed to working on a number of buildings. Uh, who knows what their plan is? I talked to Jeff Long about that and. Mm -hmm. Long time. It, I mean, maybe you could say spring of twenty twenty four. Maybe. I mean, you know, but you're you're into. I mean, okay. it'll be less than a year. I yeah. for sure. It it could be. I mean, right. again, it's functional. There's weather factors. Right. There's materials mm -hmm. factor. Right. You know, all of a sudden they do. It is going to be yeah. kind of a bad winter. I believe the climatologists. Um, we're going back again. We're in El Nino. Right. Uh, so the snow will return, so that'll blow up some of the so, projects. So this coming winter is going to make up for this past winter. Yeah. That's what they. Think. Uh, I mean, no, you're only talking. You're going to have an average winter, which we haven't really had. You know, so our twenty four to thirty inches of snow over a period of okay. three and a half months. Yeah, we can. You know, that. you do that in El Nino, not La Nina. So, but they're talking average snowfall again. So. Whether it makes it up, you know, when Nor'easter can make it up in a heartbeat. Yeah, 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 yeah right. We've seen that before. We've seen that. So, you know, Mike, I've been watching this project down in North Hunter and High School, 31 South. Yep. They're building probably just some affordable housing in there. And it kind of looks like the buildings that we were designing over here. It's just on from... the other side of 31 from the yeah. high school, right? No, it's on the same yeah. side. Yeah. 31 okay. South. Yeah. 31 yeah. South. Yeah. It's yeah. probably yeah. a solid five minutes this side of Flemington, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they're moving right along, you know. So I don't know who the project uh, the developers on that one, but, you know. I don't know anything yeah. about the project. So and then you have the one uh, in Clayton, yeah. the old A&P. Yeah. yeah. That's almost yeah. done. Yeah, I pass it every night. That's huge. That is big. Too. Yeah. That's almost done. All right, I'm digressing. So I guess we need to. 
probably have some type of communication with uh, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Official communication. Official communication, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, let him know we spoke. I mean, does he want a letter from the county saying we don't have funds for you? I mean, I don't, you know, I did speak to Lori. Yes, I You weren't there, Mike. Have, have, <laughs> can I ask a question to Mike as well? Has the county ever given money out to an affordable housing project, to your knowledge? Not that I'm aware of. You got anybody? And that's the same you? thing that no, we're and, and I'm going to tell you, and I told him, the first thing I'd request is giving money to the schools before we would give that project right. anything. So, like, okay. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, right. I'm thinking, boy, you're opening up Pandora's box. That's I can only, I mean, my right. grace. Okay. Yeah. And I guess we'll just need to express it that way to, to Jeff and and then see what the big bonus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to go under. Right. Like the truth. Right. <laughs> they signed it. <laughs> So I know the state's forcing all these affordable housing fund projects. mandate. They yeah. do wonder. Right. 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 I don't think they've con the state hasn't contributed anything to that project. So maybe they well did. well apparently they have. Now. Oh okay yeah yeah, yeah they, they have. But to my yeah. knowledge, give me a figure how much they're giving them. Oh, I don't, that's why yeah. I don't know. Well, well, well let's find out. Jeff said it. right. Uh, all right, so we'll have to set up a, a meeting with Drew. With, and, uh, well, at this stage, I would say just Jeff and. We'll see what he has to and say. see what he has to say and then speak to attorney drill as to what he feels the options are um he was slightly disappointed in the last meeting when i said that we weren't reaching out to the county but you had gone yeah. i know we chatted about it but i said we weren't going to do anything really official but then you had and mm -hmm. so we have an answer yeah you know so no. and the answer is no and she'll put it in writing too right. if need to. so we'll have to figure out how does that affect our obligation to to build it and then as for the other one um i mean we're tonight there's a resolution in here or an ordinance or whatever to i guess do the final stages of the uh, getting the sewer permission to go through there and stuff like that and that's all the approval so that and and i'm under the impression the drainage issue has been solved so that project is probably going to start to gain a little steam mm -hmm. You know, with uh, plans and final and that's what land and stuff. Four units. Well, uh, it's about the same size, yeah. give or take. You know, except three stories, not mm -hmm. two or something. Yeah, like that, yeah right? exactly. So, um, but that one's going to say, and it's one stuff. building versus a number. It's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's just one big building. Mm -hmm. So, it's still coming. Okay. Uh, I. Resolution. No, I, I see that, but we have Vicky here. It was oh, she, Vicky, where are you? You're usually the, with the committee the reports. Committee or, report. yeah, I'm sorry, Vicky, I always skipped you. No, that's okay. Um, um, I don't have a lot. Just um, the town hall meeting is going to be on May 10th at 6 30 at the middle school, and it's going to be very informational. We're going to look for a, a public input on the direction that we're going to go in terms of goal setting um, as the district goes forward. Um, Tina is going to be discussing some safety concerns, instructional needs, and um, the strategic plan. We'll be looking for uh, community input on that. We'll have to develop a five-year plan. The last one we did was three years and it's expired so we're going to start working on a five-year strategic plan uh also the um tax impact came down just a little bit because when the budget was sent to the county we included the entire in order to get the um what was it the health benefit waiver mm -hmm. um we included the entire staff because at that time, we didn't know how many people were gonna waive benefits. But then the county came back and said, you can't do that. You have to have, you can't just include everybody. You have to have the exact number. So we had to find out how many people were gonna waive the benefits. And uh, it was fewer people than what we thought. So 
instead of zero point no point zero five four, it is now no zero. It was point zero five eight. Now it's point zero five four. So instead of fifty eight dollars per one hundred thousand, now it's fifty four dollars. So uh, point zero five four. Right, three zero so, so five four three. So on a $300,000 home, it's now, instead of $174, it's $162. So it's more like 7.5 cents when you go 0 0.54. Point zero. Point zero, yeah. If it was, if there was a one no, after that was, point, that would have been 10 cents. Point zero is, five eight zero. Now it's point zero five four three. Four three. At least ours is point zero four two, right? Correct. Point zero three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Vicky, um, I don't know if you know, we, we've been in communication. I was communicating with uh Senator Steinhardt's office. He met with the Commissioner of Education, I want to say two days ago. And I sent and relayed him everything that Bill was able to get from Tina and Tina sent us about the impacts we've had with um, school funding. So I'm, I'm still in contact with Senator uh, Steinhardt's office and seeing what we can do. So. Right. Every little bit helps. But that meeting on the 10th is going to um, include a lot of information on what we're gonna, how we're going to go forward, not just this uh, next budgeted year, but the year after that, which could potentially be the year that we get the new kids mm. from this project that may or may not happen. <laughs> and where is that being held? It's at the middle school, okay. 6.30 on the 10th. South Main Street. At least I did send you the email. Thank you. The information. Yeah. So yeah, I was just telling Paul, it's three hundred and six, three hundred seventeen dollars. If these figures stay the same between the school and municipal, so unless my math is wrong, but. On a, that's on a three hundred thousand dollar house bill, or no, uh, two, uh, the average home in here is two seventy seven. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so, so on a two seventy. Okay. Right. Right. So and that's substantial. Yeah, it is, but at this, but it's still a great place to live. Right? <laughs> Not a lot that you can do with it. There's some just some state increases in there and stuff that's made yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. But we'll and with that. that. I understand you're still going to be cutting some staff with this budget. At least that's what, when I spoke to Tina last, she said if it's still going to have some staff cuts. We're kind of moving some people around, but I don't know for sure on the 10th. Okay. Um, okay. Resolution 3723 is approval of the amendment to the Helix appraisal for block 26.05, lot 17, block da 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 da. Uh, <laughs> that's right in here. And this is basically uh, our way of, well, agreeing to the appraisals and this and that to get sewer for the affordable homes project development. <laughs> on uh, Route 173 and uh, where he's right. Jerk part. Jerk part, is correct. So I'm looking for a motion to accept resolution. Brian made a motion. A second. Questions, comments? So what's the total cost? Uh, I see two figures here. I see, uh, 12,000. What's the 315,000 on the bottom? I think the first is an, is an easement, and uh, yeah, the, the second subject is... properties in the amount of 315 and B hereby approved by special counsel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm 
So Mike, what is I that? Looked, I just looked. Yeah, up. I was gonna say. I, I I had it in front of me. I mean, who owns that land right now? Dow Associates. Okay. Are we well, buying that from them? We I are. Think some of it is is Voorhees, and so, some of it yeah. could be Voorhees. No, we're. Uh, no, we're not buying. We're it. taking. Uh, um, yeah, basically you're paying three. If you're authorizing the payment of three hundred fifteen thousand yeah. dollars to purchase the subject properties, which are all of these lots and blocks. Well, the easement. The, the, the easement. easement. Right. 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 And close to twelve thousand. And what you're what you're essentially doing is you're authorizing the special counsel to make this offer okay. to the property owner. That's what you're. Okay. Should we second that? I can't. Okay. We have no choice. No, I don't believe there's an option here. Unless we want to fund it. Right. Let's not build it. All right. Questions, yeah. comments? Uh, my guy, at least. Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kenneth? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yeah. Okay. Comcast Municipal. Consent introduction to ordinance 102 2023. Mayor, can we hold that till after executive? After executive, yeah. we certainly can. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, then uh, an or I'm introducing an ordinance 103 2023 establishing fees for hiring an off duty police officer. And although some of y'all don't have it in color, uh, basically we were charging $100 per hour. We we're raising it to $115 per hour. Uh, the chief and Lisa had done some math, or maybe just the chief. And, you know, with the cost of gas increases and such like that, it, it's there's some extra costs per hour. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to raise it. And it has been raised for, what, three, four years, Chief? Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> right, I'm coming that, so. All right, so I'm looking for a motion. Are we going to have to have a, a, a public comment on this one at some, not yeah. tonight, though? Yeah, we're just introducing We're just introducing tonight. it. Yeah. All right, so I'd like a motion to introduce ordinance number 103-2023. I'll make that motion. A second. Questions, comments? Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Pena? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Well, the next one, the updated appraisal, you guys had authorized me at the last budget meeting to just allow the appraiser to, or ask that he redo that to be the 30 foot that was intended instead of the 50 foot. Mm -hmm. That's the only change. So you can see the price of the Right. Yeah. Because so, we get actually, before, Lisa, there's a second page to that ordinance that I wasn't reading, but that's really included in the 115. That's just showing the breakdown. It's showing the breakdown. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. And then we're, oh, that's just the double copy of that. Okay. So we're up to, yeah, the, uh, the introduction to the ordinance. No, we are Frank, the appraisal for block 26, lot 26, the walking path. Lisa, I still make it this one. Now it's the 30. Yeah, back, so to the 30. back to 30 and instead so of the 50. 12,000 and 2,000 for the temporary construction easement. Well, what was the original? I think we were up to 20. Okay. There have been a couple of yeah. <laughs> versions of this. Yeah. I think we were up to 20 and two, and now we're down to 12 and two. Okay. All right. And the bottom line is the the Dominguez property is the county certainly looking at it as preservation. So we would need that. to purchase this before it gets into preservation. Oh, Otherwise, yes. We it's will. a no-go. Unless they we're going to work in tandem with them. We no, we're not keep it as an exception. No, I, right. It, it would definitely, the sooner the better. Just get what it, do we need we'll get it locked up. Well, we need to at least purchase the land, whether or not we, <laughs> we build a walk on it at the stage of the game is there.
But if that property does get <laughs> once it's uh, preserved, once it's preserved, it's preserved. That's good. So <laughs> well, are we making a motion for the motion and it would be paid through uh, open space. Open space, right? So okay. Second. Questions, comments? It, let me just add uh, something for uh, background information. The, the attorney that's representing Mr. Dominguez, um, Tony Spizarro, as some of you may know him, um, he, I was speaking with him a month or so ago, and, and this came up. And um, he... It, Dominguez still hasn't given up the the idea to develop this parcel, believe it or not. I don't know if that's a leverage issue now or what it is, but so that's food for thought. You know, I, I don't see that happening, but whatever. Well, I, I know a developer that offered him a pretty substantial piece of change and he turned it down. Oh. So I'm guessing he's not favoring it at this stage of the game. My, that yeah. you would think not. So, I, but that kind of came out of nowhere. So I just figured. Yeah, well, and I just gave you that out of nowhere. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have this. Okay, all right. We got a motion. We got a vote on that. I, uh, yeah, Lisa. Uh, Mr. Baylor. Yes. Mr. Beam. Yes. Mr. Penny. Yes. Mr. McDermott. Sure. Yeah. The gentleman in the back, you're here from Comcast. No, oh, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that that is, if you remember, that's oh, Bryce. That's, uh, that's Bryce. Yeah, from my yes. Office. Okay. I knew you looked familiar. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, the Mike's office. Yeah. For, yeah. From my office. Oh. He, okay. Yeah. He's. Uh, no, my, I, I just wanted to make if we. I was with a jockey and executive around a little bit, but that's fine. Um, school resource officers. We did a uh, field scheduling guide, and oh, then we'll get back to the election calls. Lisa, I think you said you, for the field scheduling guide, you're, or, that includes the uh, pavilion too? No. No? Okay. I, I think there are some references in it to the the field scheduling guide was something that had been corrected. We're not actually sure when, but it was never officially approved by the governing body. So it was gone through between rec, I think, open space. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I think Jeremy found it. Jeremy had it. Yeah. So I think it's been pretty well vetted and I... Uh, we had Mike Lavery review it. He said it's not inconsistent with our other ordinances. Oh, okay. He felt it was fine. Um, and I think we only didn't adopt it last month because we wanted to wait for Brian. Okay, so, thank you. If there's no, I haven't heard of any. The, the only thing I will say is that now that Open Space and I met about the, <laughs> the pavilion and the number of people and possibly limiting it, you know, that could be an amendment in the future, but for right now, if you want to adopt it as is, it's it's fine. Yeah, let's adopt it so they can start using it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we, we're just going to need a motion to adopt the field scheduling guide. Right. All right, Brian, you want to Yeah, I'll make the motion. Second. Any questions, comments? Mr. Lisa? Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kenyon? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. All right, Bill, let's bounce back to you. The election polling place. Any further conversations with anybody on the subject matter? No, I was too busy to reach out to uh, Renee. At okay. School, so I'll check. But I don't think it's going to happen this year. I believe that uh, Bill Duffy is in having conversations with them about when to schedule a walkthrough. They would okay. Right. That, so, yeah, I don't know if they, yeah, so they, they would have to. Um, and their school, you probably approved your school calendar for next year. Yes, I did. So it would have to be the following year. It'll be used. Well, they don't necessarily have to cancel school. Okay. It will be over at the right. middle school, which would have going through by the gymnasium, setting up the gymnasium. They just can't. You're, still, you're still bringing in a lot of cars in a full parking lot. Yeah. And you're still bringing people in when the kids there. They're, they're going out for recess in May. Well, it'll be June. June, uh, June I, mean, I mean, June, sorry. June and November. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's going to happen this year. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Uh, there's more it. conversations yeah. Yeah. after yeah. they review it. Okay. Uh, fire hygiene update. Can we uh, hold that one for executive as well? We maybe? can. All right. We have a solicitor's permit application for the ice cream experience uh, doing business as Melt Ice Cream Bar. There's a clerical error in your solicitor's permit right here. They are going to have to submit a new one. But in the meantime, 
there are, they uh use the wrong address right they, yeah they use the wrong address they put bloomsbury's town hall address as their business address oh. even though it's mailing here so that needs to be a little bit done but it, it, now chief you have to because of the nature of this business and the potential contact with children, you need to vet anybody who's going to be on this ice cream truck? Yes, so that's different than any other permit because they're interacting directly with the uh, children. So they have to be fingerprinted through uh, the uh, fingerprint agency that the uh, state basically uses for when uh, sometimes when people send uh, them to for coaching or um, other uh, type of background checks. Uh, uh, if it was a taco truck, they wouldn't have to do that though. But because ice cream specifically related to ice cream is a yes, yeah, that's specific. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. But Paul, he uh, the police department does um, do a modified background check on all of the solicitor permits, right? Everyone that comes. No, right. Regardless, yeah. exactly. No, I understand that. Regardless. Yeah, so this, yeah, this one's a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, thorough as far as uh, actually printing because we can't print people for normal uh, social permits. No, sure. And then Lisa, I see that they checked off they want an annual approval, so that would be for year round. Correct. So they're going to have to make it pretty darn clear that this is the only person on that truck. If there's a potential for other employees. Correct. She did respond to Tammy that it would be just her. I, I'm not sure how they would well, that, Chief, but... in your, I, I, I guess as you have a conversation with them and they're looking, you know, we're going to have to find that out, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't, I think in my 20 years here, I don't think we've ever had an ice cream truck. But, uh, well, I, I remember. no, I certainly recall bits and pieces here and there. It was certainly not a staple um, years and years ago. And it was years and years ago. Um but it used to run through Stewart's on 20 years ago and stuff. I mean, I here and there. Either. Well, I could see them not coming down on your end of town. They were in the development. I remember, but Mike. You, man, yeah, we you, had. Yeah, we had. No, we had. Limited, limited experience. Limited, but, yeah, but, but right. But it's been there. a long time. Long since. time. Long time. Long time. Yeah, but there were, yeah. But again, long time. So, but. Uh, I got a twist. Was I, I can see a chicken. Mike's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I got one. I did. That's great stuff. Yeah, no, I remember chasing after with my two daughters. So, and they, again, they were small, but again, it was very limited. You always, hey, are they ever coming back again? But so anyway, so chief, this is in your hands right now. So there's Lisa. We're not going to vote on this or anything until after the chief. Yeah, I mean, it's completely up to you guys. But if you did want to vote on it tonight, it would have to be subject to his clearance. So, mm -hmm. Chief, how long do you think it would take you to deal with this? Can we just put this off till next meeting while you do it? It kind of depends on when they schedule their appointment to get fingerprinted and mm -hmm. what the availability is with getting them. So it's kind of can be put on that. If, if that's the only thing that's outstanding, there's no harm in the committee approving it subject to the chief's sign off. Okay. And then if they don't, that way, if they get everything in a week, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think you did that the last time, actually. We did. Yeah. All right, uh, then let's have make a motion to accept the solicitor's permit with the clerical correction made and with the uh, approving of the uh, police department's approval. That's your motion. What's the motion? Second. Uh, any questions, comments? Lisa? Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Penner? Yes. Ms. Darwin? Yes. Uh, solicitors and oh, yes. Where uh, yeah. No. Okay. And I want to accept a resignation of Robert Hill with regret, a fire inspector for Greenwich Township. Um, he's done it for a while. He's done a good job. Uh, we're going to miss him. Uh, I make a motion to accept his resignation. I'll second. Any questions, comments? With regret. Lisa? Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kenny? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yeah. Well, I think we skipped 8J, the fire yeah, company. We skipped what? 8J, the fire company. Oh, 8J, the vendor, vendor fair. fair. Okay. And very simply, they just, when they do their vendor fair, sometimes they need to expand and they just wanted approval to utilize our, par our parking lot as needed that day. Uh, I'll make that motion. 
I'll second it. What day is that? You know, I think oh, it's the 29th or something like that. 29, 26 of April. Uh, any questions, comments? Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the 29th. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kenyon? Yes. Ms. McDermott? Yeah. Okay, correspondence. Uh, letter Warren County Preservation regarding the grant applications and trust funds. That is all right. We were awarded eighteen thousand dollars. That was a grant. Oh no, that was from the yeah. NJDCA. That's the bottom one. Yeah, and if I could just uh, mention that I had gotten an email from the state advising of that grant opportunity, and I had not seen it previously, nor had Frank Pinto yeah, or Jeremy, and we had like three days, I think, yeah, to get you. in, and Great. we just kind of sent out an email, and everybody rallied, and especially Frank Pinto, he did, um, he did a great job with actually uh, submitting the application, but also Joe jumped right in and said we could use some work at Stecker Field and yeah you know, everybody just rallied and got it done and a few weeks later we get an eighteen thousand dollar award. So nice. I want to thank them for nice. the work. Yeah. So would that be wondering what that was. I, I yeah. saw it I was yeah, like great. wow. What, what, I'm what, like they must have on. extra because all of a sudden they told yeah, everyone. Yeah, I, they may be so <laughs> so with that being said though I read through this uh, application and everything and and it kind of just clicked on me that we should probably get another subcommittee together mm -hmm. along with maybe uh, some open space, and obviously, if a resident wanted to be involved, to look at at other available spots. Uh, you know, we were discussing earlier. You know, uh, there's a farm that might be available for the right price if we could get fifty percent of it sponsored. And it says here, open space acquisition. They'll we pay fifty, they pay fifty. There is some 100% grant funding in through here. Uh, we have a, a little spot down on the Muskinecon River off of Asbury Road. Mm -hmm. um, although there is a sign there that it says it's canoe friendly uh, that the watershed folks put up there and everything else like that. Uh, unfortunately, the people who paid that road down there for the county dumped a load of millings right smack in the middle of it. But I, uh, without maybe we could reach out to them to improve that area. So yeah, with, with this from the land preservation department, I gave you guys a snippet of what they sent to us. Right. Um, it was a much more That's expensive true. application, bless you. And so you can use it for acquisition or for improvement or for this. And or for his so the reason, so. you know, I, I think it's probably a good idea and, and, and maybe that allows us to maybe overpay for some farmland because there's matching mm -hmm. grants or something like that. But we should probably have a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to set that up tonight. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there so you can give us some thought. Um, you know, maybe there's something out there that we can do because let's face it, there's a couple of bucks in uh, uh, open space. Um, the last time we spent any of our own money was acquiring behind North Main Street and stuff like that. Um, maybe we can look at some open space or some recreational opportunities uh, along the Musconecon because we have two properties that we own uh, along there uh, and, and something or even creating a another recreational uh, sedative park, you know, on a piece mm -hmm. of town land also. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying this, but I'm, you know, there's a couple of spots available for something similar to that. So, um, but we should have set up a subcommittee. So let's put some thought onto that and okay. maybe we can get back to that and improve a couple of areas. Okay. Uh, you're all going to see there's an email there from Lydia Coates. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Looking, you know, Encouraging us to hire an SRO officer for the school to, and her personal opinions on it. We all know uh, we've been working towards that. Funding is just a big issue on the subject matter, but we are at least a little bit closer than we have yeah. been in the past. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I think the other problem, and people agree with me, is finding. Uh, Help. Well, yeah, I guess that turned out to be a bit of a problem too, right, Chief? Well, ours was specific in that 
It would only guarantee employment until the end of September. Right. So uh, hoping that uh, if we have the um, availability of offering something that- A more permanent structure? More permanent, yes. Right. And someone, right. Okay. There are uh, you know, a number of officers in the uh, local surrounding areas that are retiring, so. Okay. All right. So with that, um, we'll hold public comments. Vicki, do you need public comment? Um, I just have one question. Well, all right. Let, 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 let's open uh, public comment for you so that you can get out. Uh, I'll second that. I'm <laughs> taking it your motion. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the motion that you just passed on that strip of the Dominguez property, so you actually agreed to purchase it, so it, that's done. We've agreed to purchase it. That it doesn't mean there's a sidewalk going to go there at this stage of the game. That was going to be my next question. But we've agreed to purchase it so that if the funding becomes available, be it I through. I you already had the funding for that. No, we were applied for a grant uh, no, for it. No. The, oh, so the program the was grant grant. never came out. Yeah. Oh, it never oh, came out. Got it? Yeah. No. So we, yeah, they, uh, uh, we still, still have to purchase the right? property in order yeah, to do it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for myself. Yeah. I ex fully expect that, that the program will come back and, we'll, but uh, over the past six, eight months, a year mm -hmm. or more, uh, since we've been looking at this and so forth, well, more than you want more than a year, there, that program does not exist. There's no grants mm -hmm. uh, available at this time. And so. the school pay for it? Well, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we want, yeah. <laughs> we're going to buy it. We had a open space, but we also. was received like no. two or three years ago. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 Talking about oh, no. No, 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 but we're going to, we're going to purchase the property just in case. We do, so we do have open space money and the county, I, I think we can go through and, and look at how to fund to, to get that path. We have talked about it. There's still a lot of chatter on it, but yeah. we have to do this before. We had to purchase it no matter what. Before the property potentially became um, a preserve. And there's no, once you purchase this, there's no chance of that happening. Well, we'll we'll own the, the county coming in and restricting it. No, no, okay. no, because then they right. want to preserve. The, the right, talk that's not preserved. Right, yeah. right. Okay. You know, it's yeah, it's uh, well, it's going to be its own, but it's going to be its own parcel. It's, it's going to be a right. lot, right. so right. 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 no, they won't. It's yeah, yeah, it could be across town. Right. And it's so narrow that there's really nothing else that could be no. used. For. No, no, right, okay. right, right. Okay. Just, just a uh, clarification on that. Just trying to prepare for the future on it. That's all. Okay. Good plan again. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Jake? No. Okay. With that being said, I uh, made the motion to close public comment. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, well, I was going to say, you want to do that now or in the uh, after the executive? We can do it after the executive. That's kind of what I was thinking. Right. Well, well, Gary Hill's letter. He wanted oh, a red and open public comment. Um, I think that could have oh, actually, yeah, letter. just. No, it came a few minutes before the before meeting. Before the meeting. Oh, okay. No, it was emailed apparently to everybody. Oh. So, with that, I make a motion to go into executive. A second. Second. Oh. Is this an all in favor or are you roll call? No, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. objection? No. Okay. Uh, what are we going to need? About 15, 20 minute stops? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you all want to come back in 15, 20 minutes, they do. I guess. Yeah, we'll take care of you. All right, Mayor, we move from executive session at 9.07 p.m. where we discuss four matters. Uh, contractual matters dealing with Comcast, uh, fire hydrants, and aqua, and Finale Consulting contract, and one uh, litigation matter dealing with January Kennels. No official action was taken. Copies of these minutes will be available at such time as the committee determines there is no harm to the public interest. Okay. And then, Mayor, if the committee is so inclined, 
Uh, we need a motion uh, to approve the assignment of the Penelope contract subject to legal review. Uh, exactly. I'll make that motion. Second. Questions, comments? Lisa? Okay. Uh, Mr. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kenya? Yes. And and Mayor, next, um, if, if the yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. McDermott. Yeah, I'm still trying to write the motion. <laughs> and Mayor, if the committee so inclined, um, we need a vote, to, a motion to approve uh, the resolution number thirty-eight hyphen twenty-three for Comcast right of way. Can we get a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any questions, comments? It's well, just for that. So it's just that, yes, yeah. that the resolution. It's a modification of the resolution we already passed. Right now, they got to get homeowner permission. Lisa, uh, Mr. Baylor, yes, Mr. Bean, yes, Mr. Kenner, yes, Ms. McDermott, yes. And next, Mayor, if uh, the committee so inclined, we need a motion to authorize the attorney to write the letter discussed in executive session regarding January Kennels. I'll make the motion. Second. Questions, comments. Lisa, Mr. Baylor, yes, Mr. Bean, yes, Mr. Kenner, yes, Ms. McDermott, yes. Uh, I make a motion to open public comment. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need. I didn't get any letters. So. No. I, I, yeah. Um, Mike's about to read it. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, this is an email from Gary Hill, Clerk Bird, attached to his final letter. I'm requesting to be read during the open session of the Greenwich Township Committee meeting tonight. Thank you, Gary A. Hill. It says this letter is from Gary Hill, current president of the Greenwich Township Emergency Squad. I ask that this letter be read during either public comment period or when most appropriate during open public session of the Greenwich Township Committee meeting of April 20th, 2023. This letter is in response to comments made by Committeeman Bill Kanyuk during the budget meeting of April 11th, 2023. Comments made by Committee Mechanic seem to be out of character as he has historically been a supporter of the local fire and EMS. $110,000 for fire and EMS was the estimated number thrown out during the budget as to what is stipend to fire and EMS serving Greenwich Township. What is the true cost of that $110,000 against your $6 million budget as a, as a rhetorical question? Committee Mechanic stated, I'm tired of paying for people who don't live here for services. Well, let me remind you the township is collecting revenue, a lot of revenue from those people who don't live in Greenwich. So is it okay for people to say, I am not going to pay that speeding ticket because the funds are not going to the community that I live in? Does that statement mean we are going to forfeit the fees from the tickets issued on the interstate and way station? Are we going to have to start asking people if they are a resident before providing assistance? Of course, not every member, whether they are police, fire, or EMS, take an oath to provide service and protect those in need, not just the residents. I would like to provide some clarification regarding another state. You stated you received the bill for services for a family member. That bill was from Hunter and Medical Center for Advanced Life Support Coverage. Right now, as a 501c3 organization, we cannot bill for our services until several items are checked off a very long list to satisfy the state of New Jersey Office of Emergency Medical Services. If GTES also billed, that amount would be split between Hunter and Medical Center for the ALS treatment based on care they provided and transportation and facility. The GTES has been exploring ways of being more self-sufficient for several years. In fact, discussions of a merger with other local squads was discussed as far back as 10 years ago. One of those squads pulled away and hired a few staff members and began billing for their services. That agency closed up within 15 months, citing a lack of revenue. That agency historically had a larger call volume than Greenwich Township. Just billing for medical, just billing for services is not as simple as sending out a bill. The New Jersey Office of Emergency Medical Services requires all EMS agencies that bill for services be licensed. This is a long process that GTES has been working on for several months. Being licensed will also require us to need more EMT, something we already are short on. Hiring additional staff will then require additional insurance coverages as well, such as workers' comp. The days of volunteerism and EMS and fire is dwindling, not just in Greenwich Township, but nationwide, especially with EMS. We are thankful for the support of the Storesville Fire Department while we transition through these rough times. But rest assured, we are actively pursuing methods of covering calls, first, then the financial aspect of it. Another concerning comment by Commissioner by Committee McKenyuk, your response to the volunteer portion may be abolished was, well, then we get a service we got to pay for. Well, those services are not just lying around and they will cost a lot more than $110,000. Mm -hmm. 
which by the way, your auditor managed to find well over $110,000 with the stroke of a pencil moving some funds around. I recommend you do research before saying Fire and EMS will be forced to find a way to get more revenue. I disagree. The township will have to find a lot more money to find fully to fund fully staffed fire and EMS agencies because when you see those numbers, you'll wish you were only paying out 110,000. Those are my comments as president of Greenwich Township Emergency Squad. As a, as a longtime resident of this town, I ask this, how in the world do you plan to provide any services to the residents with any type of layoffs? Every department in the municipality is running on bare bones staff. Less staff equals less services, less services equals less tax revenue because your residents will be moving to a town where they get something for their dollar. I'll reserve my remaining comments for another time as I'm sure my three minutes are up. Sincerely, Gary A. Hill. That's it. Well, Gary, I support you 100%. And, uh, I, you know, 10 years from now, down the road, it's probably going to be all paid, unfortunately. You know, well, we'll so, well, we will continue to support you. And we found even some more money with some interest that we found. So, uh, um, we're not going to leave you hanging. And with that being said, I make a motion to uh, adjourn. No, we got to make a motion to close public comment. Oh, okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Oh, I should have seen my comment. Don't All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Yeah. All right. Aye. And now, I'll make the motion. <laughs> right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bob left us with a lot of stuff. Uh, no, I don't. And some stuff 